Yes, guys, welcome back to episode 8 of the under-23 So Rare Road to Glory. I got the intro wrong last week. I thought it was episode 8. It obviously wasn't. But yeah, hopefully I've got it right this week. What's going on? Hope you had a good weekend. I uh, hope you had a good SO5 weekend. Let me know in the comment section if you did or not. But yeah, let's get straight into things then with episode 8. And of course, we always look back at last week. I did end up going into Division 5 uh, after the contemplation of, you know, do I go Division 2 where we've, you know, been working our way up, you know, through the division, started off in 5 all the way up to 2. I just didn't think our matchups were good enough across the board to, yeah, warrant, you know, maybe, you know, scraping a box in Division 2, basically. And so I thought, you know, play it safe, use one of our, you know, our other entries, because we have, everyone has three into, our, into or every competition now at this point. Of course, we only have one goalkeeper, so we're only playing one lineup. And so I put it into Division 5, 300, well, just under 320 points. Wicked debut for Afon Grubber, by the way. 40 AA. We had a good feeling about him, and it does look like he's stepped up, and yeah, he looks like, you know, he could be that reliable defender that we've been looking for, because on the other hand, Danilo Vega has been the complete opposite of that. Dakovic didn't keep a clean sheet. We said he could, you know, it was very likely that he, you know, concedes three goals. He did concede three goals. But he did get 16 AA, which is quite impressive to be fair. So, you know, it wasn't as bad as it could have been if he didn't get that AA. The biggest disappointment, though, was Julian Bass was on the bench. After two really good games for, for Sparta, it does look like there's a little bit more competition now in midfield. So, yeah, he came off the bench at halftime, 7.8 AA as our captain. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm just getting it wrong every time, aren't I? When, when I captain Bass, Negley pops off. When I captain Negley, Bass pops off. It's just the way it's, it's going right now. I'm just trying to chase it and... Yeah, it's just not, not working out that way. But yeah, Negley, goal, 18 AA. Like, he is the real deal for us right now. As a forward, like, to get 18 AA is very, very impressive. And yeah, it, it might come to the stage now, lads, where we might have to get rid of Negley. Um, but I'll get into that a bit later and kind of tell you my strategy on that one. And then Bula, I think I mentioned in last week's episode, I couldn't see him outscoring a, a 60, a 25 AA. He ended up on 22 AA or just under... So we were quite accurate in, in how that worked out for him. Like I said, EA was at home, but it was a tough game um, against USG. And he was close to a triple-double, it looks like. He needed one more dual one. So he was pretty unlucky. But we did end up winning a box. We were 227th, 30 points off a tier 5. So we were firmly in the boxes. And in the box, we did win Essence. And that then allowed us to craft our first card ever. On the on the series so that was amazing we meant you know we ended up crafting a card i was live at the time so i'll roll the clip now get in we're going to be crafting our first card for the road to glory that is massive and we're going to do it immediately because why not we're going to do it immediately who is the first ever card that we craft for the road to glory going to be 212 of a thousand it's croatia it's midfielder it's Dynamo? Okay. Is this Dario Spittich? That's funny. I used to own a Dario Spittich, but he's not under 23. Um, so he won't be able to be used for the Road to Glory itself. I don't think he's starting either. So, I mean, it's probably a tier 4 or a tier 5, realistically, isn't it? So, yeah, you know, the card we won wasn't amazing. Um, he wasn't under 23 because a lot of our essence has come from rivals, which is like a global pool. Um, and so, yeah, you know, there was a high chance that we weren't going to get an under-23 player. And Dario Spitic, yeah, you know, came out of uh, out of the factory. He's a card that I'm quite familiar with. I, I used to own him. I think I won his Super A years ago. It was a forward, though, but now he's a midfielder. He's at Dynamo, so he's playing for a good team, but he doesn't really play regularly. And, yeah, you know, somebody bought him for 60 pence, you know, not too long ago. So we can sell him. I mean, he didn't cost us anything, which is fine. You know, every little helps. It would have been nice if he was an under-23 player, so we could have kept him, but, you know, it wasn't to be. So I have updated the spreadsheet to reflect that. Um, I've also updated all the floor prices of our cards currently. Um, there hasn't been that many big changes. Probably Negley going up in price is, is the biggest change. He's like £5.50 floor. Bass has come down a little bit. Vega's come down a little bit. I actually need to change this to red as I'm looking at it because he is less than what we paid for him right now. Um, floor price wise, we added Spittich in. Affengrubber's price is flying. He's like £1.77. So I don't know whether that's the road to glory effect. Coming to fruition, or maybe, you know, the 40 AA definitely helps. But yeah, gallery value right now, I know this is a little bit small, so I should probably make it a bit bigger for you. I think that might be a little bit better. But yeah, gallery value right now is on floor price, £26.51, and we do have a total balance still of £5.79. I've not brought any, no, I haven't bought anyone as of yet. 
I do have an offer out on a player, which we'll get into. So basically, I do have a, a thought where it's the last... Well, there, there's been or there will be two Dutch specials. There was one last weekend and there's one this weekend. That's the last Dutch special you know, of the season, basically, that Sora are putting on. Where you need... I think you need three in-season cards and two out of season for rare and limited. Price is, is flying. Like, he's nearly six quid. We paid... What do we pay? Two pounds... Two pounds 44 for him. So I do think it could be a good idea for me to cash in on him and not, like, not have him this weekend, basically. Sell him for five pounds odd. Let's see. He's up for five pounds 50 for now. We sell him this weekend. We'll see, you know, what happens. If he scores or whatever, then we kind of regret it. But if he doesn't, then, you know, it's kind of worked out in our way because I can only assume that his price is going to come down a little bit. One, if he doesn't perform, I'm not wishing ill upon him because I know some of you guys will probably own him out, out there. Um, but, you know, the Dutch special is definitely, you know, increasing the demand for Dutch cards right now, especially good ones, especially good ones with good matchups. And so, yeah, I think Negley, it could be a good time for me to kind of cash in on Negley there. You could argue probably the same for Bass, but it doesn't look like Bass is predicted to start this weekend again. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happier to kind of keep hold of Bass for now. But whilst Negley is at a high, like we could get 100% profit on him if we sold him for around five quid. So that's kind of the plan. And I do have an offer out right now on a card, which I'm quite inclined maybe just to buy outright. But I do have an offer out on this uh, Michel Sego, who plays for Varazdin in the Croatian League. Yeah, he takes set pieces. He's been scoring pretty well. Matchup this weekend isn't great. Neither is the next one. I think they played Dynamo um, Zagreb at home. So from a matchup perspective, it's not amazing. But if I could get him in for like £1.50, after potentially selling Bass for around five quid, plus the balance we have, we, you know, we built up a very well we would have built up a very very good balance like let's say we do sell uh bass uh, if we sell negley sorry for for a fiver our balance is going to be over 10 pounds I mean, we started we started the series with 20 quid and we already have the gallery we already you know already have obviously the um the castro montes win and sale last week was massive for us i think he went for like what was it six yeah six pounds 12 pence in the end and yeah that's that's obviously catapulted the 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 series and the gallery to to heights that we, we probably didn't expect to, to see, especially so soon into the season, considering like we haven't really had, you know, barring like this week and last week with, with the Montez, we haven't really had that much success really. So, you know, from like a financial standpoint, like selling cards for a lot, winning good cards in rivals, for example. So yeah, that's kind of my plans. Of course, that's all conditional on, you know, negly selling, etc. Um, and then me getting Sago in. If any of you guys that you know, want to know how I scouted him like I, I mean it wasn't anything incredible like i didn't spend a, a ton of time on it and that's you know a huge thanks to to what sora data do on their pick scores so under 23 you go over to the game week center you go to pick scores you toggle by game week which is game week 13 this upcoming week i then go to limited and i basically see you know all the forwards this weekend that have you know the better matchups um you know in a list basically and you can see it by floor price and you just work your way down the list and see, you know, what I can afford and what I can't afford. This Emil Sadie definitely uh, popped out at me as well. He plays in the Norwegian league for Rosenborg. He scored 100 or, or close to 100 last week. Uh, the issue with him is, yeah, he's pretty cheap. But there's not that many games left. So I'm a little bit skeptical on getting him in for like a short period of time. I want somebody with like a sustained amount of fixtures left. You know, their season's only really started for most of Europe. Of course, you know, the, the main cards in here or the main cards at the top of this list are, are very expensive. So a lot of them are out of our realm, really. Um, this guy popped up as well. Uh, Tozewski, who plays for, well, in the Austrian Bundesliga for Klagenfurt. He's been doing pretty okay. Not a ton of AA. Um, and the Austrian League's a bit funny as well with like the breaks that they have as well. So yeah, I wasn't really too fond on that. Um, Jesus Ferreira is £2.55 right now. I'm a big Jesus Ferreira fan. He's, I think he's had two goals in two games, but MLS again is, is ending pretty soon. So I'm not really too interested in, in that. Jacob Brown is an interesting one. Um, he plays for Go Ahead Eagles. He's a forward card. He's only 20 as well. He's a little bit uh, less expensive than, than Negley. He's £3.70 floor price. And he's been taking set pieces and his scores are kind of reflecting that. Some really good scores in like tough games. They beat Sparta Rotterdam a couple of game weeks ago and they drew with, with Ajax. So they're, they're definitely no mugs and, and he's at the, the centre of that. He was definitely in the conversation as well. But of course, go ahead and playing in the Dutch Special Weekly this weekend. So his price, although he's been playing pretty well, so it's, it's definitely dependent on that as well, you know, as far as you know, how his price is going. But also like after the Dutch Special this weekend, I'd assume, even though they play Groningen and he might smash, 
I'd assume his price come down just because of the the lack of another Dutch uh, a Dutch special. Jan Gobel came up as well. Um, he's been taking a couple set pieces at Toulouse uh, under 23 until 2025. Like I don't like buying players from the French league really, especially under 23s for the most part. Um, but he's especially if they're playing on like not a great team. Toulouse aren't great, but you know anything from an attacking perspective they're doing. He's involved in massively, as you can see, a couple of goals, a couple of assists so far, um, and some good AA as well, which is what I'm really looking for. But if we scroll right down, we will get to Michel Sago, who I've obviously put um, an offer in for. 24 years old, so he's under 23 until next season, even though he's 24, just how his birthday falls. Matchups aren't great the next two, even the next four. Like, Gorica at home's fine, but like, Riker away, Zagreb at home, and Ozcek away aren't good matchups, if I'm being completely honest. But for the price I could potentially get him in at, you know, and, and what we could cash Negley in for, we might even buy Negley back for half. Who knows? But, like, some of these scores are ridiculous. Like, 32 AA as a forward. 25 AA this weekend. Okay, the matchups are a little bit better there. I won't disagree there. Like, I'm not expecting those scores in these next four fixtures. I'd hope there's a couple of decisives in there because he does take he does take corners, sorry. I looked in the last five for Varazdeen. Um, you have a little scroll down here, and he is the and he is the primary corner taker for them. So I think there's a lot of upside in him at like one pound fifty if we could get him for that. I think he's listed like lowest floor price at like one pound eighty ish. He is probably uh, the front runner, I would say. David Asvili, one pound seventy six, not terrible either. Like I said, I try and keep it European based because there's some like MLS cards at like 75, 78 pence for Jaquil Malsorotti, who's a decent player, but like you know the season's ending pretty soon. I don't really think I could ex extract enough value out of them um especially sell on value as well like i'm not all about wanting to sell on these cards for profit all the time um but like when there's opportunities like dutch specials etc i definitely think there is um some merit in just selling into demand dion bello his well his price has kind of fallen off a cliff a little bit he hasn't been amazing he did score in his last game though prior to that he did go on a bit of a, a dry patch and He's at £1.37. I'm, I'm actually quite tempted to maybe get him and Sago in and kind of play the matchups with, with both of them instead of having Negley, when Negley, and if Negley sells. And that's like a combined three quid for, for two cards in that sense. And we've been sort of crying out for a bit of depth, really, at, at forward level. If I sell Negley right now, I literally don't have a forward going into this going into this weekend. So it would be, you know, really important for us to either get Sago or Bailo in or get both. And yeah, I, I didn't mention it yet because, I mean, it's not that relevant, but <laughs> Danilo Vega didn't start this weekend or last weekend. Came off the bench and got an error led to goal. <laughs> so thank God we brought in Affen Grover because yeah, he's been an absolute godsend so far. And yeah, has, has really elevated our defensive, you know, scoring ability by, by a lot. So looking ahead to this weekend then, as far as lineup building goes, Thank God Dakovic has a good matchup at home. He goes straight in, of course. I mean, there's no, you know, there's no alternative, but, you know, a very good matchup there where I'm really hoping there's, there's a clean sheet on the horizon for him. We've got Vega at home, which is interesting, but he did have an absolute stinker last game off the bench. So I really don't think he starts, despite um, Soradata saying he's 100% on to, to play so far. But it's medium reliability, so you can't really take that, yeah, too, too concrete. You know, it, it's definitely take it with a pinch of salt there, but... Affen Grubber, two really good scores back-to-back, -back, 30 AA, 40 AA. They are away to Malaga, which is not an easy game for Elche, who have started pretty slow. You guys know I love a home fixture, but in, in this scenario, I think it, it kind of makes sense to still go with Affen Grubber, knowing that Vega's definitely not nailed on this weekend, in my opinion. As far as midfielders go, Clarkson is back in action, which is fun. I don't know if I'm going to risk him this weekend. He did play in the Cup, actually, last weekend for Aberdeen and had a stormer. I think Bula at home, Guzman at home... I think it, you know, I know it's tough leaving Bass out. We all know that at home to Fortuna Sittard as well. But I'm just not confident as far as what Predictify is saying right now or the experts over there. They don't really think that the Bass plays, which I can't really argue with because he didn't start last game. He didn't have that much of an impact as far as I'm aware. And he's 30% on to, to start this weekend. So I think that's fair. Like I'm not going against that, but I'm taking that into consideration and going, okay, well, I have you know, two other midfielders that both are at home. Kind of makes sense for me to just go with those two, right? Right now, Negley, of course, is our only forward. Until he sells, if he sells, then we'll bring in, you know, the replacements. But for now, he's he's going to be our forward. And I am going to go in and, and captain him if he if he doesn't sell and, and we keep him beyond the deadline. Great matchup at home. It's like a perfect playing opportunity, but also a perfect selling opportunity um, as far as, you know, where his price has gone. And so that would be the team we go in with. I am going to just double check, though, to see what uh, Bulat is... Uh, predicted okay so he's 95 percent on so bulat is absolutely nailed on this weekend um barring any freak injuries or training you know 
bust ups or whatever, he should be on to play. Uh, Standard Liege have been playing really, really well. He hasn't been unbelievable, but he definitely, you know, he's definitely pulling his weight. So that's him checked out. Let's go into the championship and see if we have... Okay, so we don't have Derby predictions yet. This is Thursday morning whilst I'm filming this. So we have Norwich, but we don't have Derby. So we won't know if Guzman is on to play yet, which is fine. We can go in and see if Affengrubber is on to play, though. Let's have a look and go to La Liga Hypermotion. Go to Elche, which was updated 45 minutes ago. And there he is, David Affengrubber, at the heart of Elche's defence at 95%. We love to see it. That is huge. And then we could look at Tadakovic as well. I don't think he's much of a worry yet. 90% on. So, you know, our, our whole lineup is sort of set to play, you know, barring anything crazy that happens now um, until, you know, the, the game weekends. You know, I look at this five and go, this has a chance to do something. By do something, I mean, we could potentially, if our goalkeeper gets a clean sheet, now I don't want to jinx it, but if, if, if Dakovic gets a clean sheet, lads, I think we could see ourselves in the card positions, to be honest. Now, we do have a contemplation on, you know, where do we play our team this weekend? And the contemplation is Division 2, Division 4, or Division 5, which we've never used before, um, because you have three, you know, three potential lineups. And yeah, your lowest will always be in the lowest division, if that makes sense. And yeah, we've never, we've never used our third lineup, so it, it automatically goes into Division 5 for us. So Division 2 is paying out... Uh, tier 5 to 230th. Lads, I fancy ourselves this weekend. Genuinely, like, you know, we, with the core the core group we have, uh, things can change, you know, on, on Negley. I do really fancy ourselves to to potentially get into the card rewards. Like, why can't we get to top, 200, top 230th then and win ourselves, you know, a minimum of a tier 5 in a box? Like, I really think we could. I really, really do. Even if, even if Negley sells and we get another forward or, or two in, I definitely think that team there... Can, can compete in Division 2. Let me know what you think, though, in the comment section. Am I being delusional? Potentially, because this is the first time I've played in Division 2 Limited. So you guys will know a bit more than me um, as far as you know, how, how I can expect to, um, to go. Now, I... Oh, yeah, this is a bit annoying, isn't it? So I have Negley up for sale. So I won't be able to lock that team in yet um, because of list or play. So I'm going to not put that team in for now. And we're going to end the video on um, an arrivals update, which I'll be honest, lads. Since the Castro Montes win, I feel like I'm on top of the world and... I just haven't been, I haven't been grinding, that's a lie, like I have been playing rivals, I really have, like you can see in the, the match history here, my last my last uh, game was a win, thankfully, in the Sevilla game, but like I've just not been able to put too many streaks together, winning the Benfica game, loss in the Mallorca game, winning the Copenhagen game, winning the NEC game, lost Real Madrid, lost the Hamburg game, lost the Willem 2 game, I went on a bit of a, yeah, bad streak there, won the Racing for All game, lost the Liverpool game, won the Stoke game, like it's just been... A very 50-50 split on like, I'm winning, I'm losing, I'm winning, I'm losing. And yeah, I've not really had any momentum, to be honest. Like, I have been playing it. Like, I, you know, my tickets, I'm on 58 tickets. Like, my tickets are definitely going down. Definitely using them, but I'm probably not using them in the, I don't know, most optimal way, maybe. Like, I'm just trying to, you know, pump out three or four games at a time and see kind of what happens. I've been a bit unlucky where, like, the game, like, I'm on a two-win streak. And the, the game that I need to end for the third game to have the, the win streak doesn't end and it's you know one of the other games that I'm losing ends and I you know, lose my win streak right so yeah bit annoying there but I, I say that I was just outside of the the top five in in the road to glory in the squad so you know I'm not doing terribly as captain am I pulling my weight probably not I haven't made it into the top five yet but I was one one energy point or whatever we're going to call it off off getting into the top five so there's definitely an improvement there there definitely needs to be yeah way more given to it but I know that yeah we've still got a few days until this actually closes so you know I can definitely get into the top five I'm not sort of writing myself off right now yeah I, I can't keep living off the, the Castro Montes win basically is what I'm getting at so yeah, let me know what you're thinking about this weekend. Let me know if you think that team can compete in Division 2. And if you do enjoy the video, lads, please do leave it a like. Subscribe if you are new to the channel. Let me know in the comment section if you're excited for this upcoming weekend. And I shall see you guys in the next episode.